Thomas and the Magic Railroad MLP Crossover 20th Anniversary Story Based on the Railway Series by the Reverend W. Audrey Series for Television by Britt Alcroft My Little Pony Friendship is Magic Created by Lauren Faust Written by Tommy Bauer and me, Super Dog Lover 1 Part 1 we begin our story with a scrapbook as it opens up to some photo albums. This is Daddy and I when we f first met. Hi there. Hi, Daddy. Mommy's going to tell us a story. Lily's son and daughter waved to their father coming up the hill with his horse, and they also had a dog that looked like Mutt. Are Thomas, Twilight Sparkle, and the Lost Engine in this story? Yes. Points to two photos. There's Bluebird, and there's Grandpa and the family. We fade into the big city. It all began in the big city, just before your uncle was born. And I was going to stay with Grandpa. I was with my mom, and I see magic that no one else has time to. Lily, your dad wants to say hello. Hi, Dad. When are you coming home? Then she frowned. Oh, I hope the job goes well. Yeah, and I love you, too. She hung up, then spoke to her mother. Grandpa's been so sad since Grandma Tasha died, and he never comes here to see us. Well, maybe your visit will cheer him up, hmm? Did you get his present? Here. I'm making him a friendship bracelet. Honey, that's beautiful. But I'd rather just stay here with you. Lily's mother smiled and hugged her tenderly and gave her a kiss on her head. I'm going to go up this way. Okay. Be careful. You always say that. Lily's mother smiled and chuckled a little. Lily waved to her mother before she climbed up the fire escape. Lily's mother waved back and went inside the front entrance. A little bit upwards, Lily stopped and pulled out a toy bluebird from her pocket. You're coming with me to Grandpa's, Bluebird. I know how much you like to travel. She looked up at the rainy sky. We move upwards towards the sky. The big city is far away from Grandpa's house on Muffle Mountain, and I had no idea that he and that mountain share a deep secret within. We cut to Burnett Stone. He was adding some birdseed to his newly built birdhouse when he could hear a soft and beautiful train whistle coming from deep inside Muffle Mountain. We get an overhead shot of the mountain as we hear the whistle too. One, ha one man, however, did not believe in magic. He was greedy and only cared about money. His name was P.T. Boomer. We see him loading some dangerous explosives on his motorcycle. Nor did I know that a man called Boomer was determined to discover the secret. P.T. Boomer stared at Mutt, looking at him before he drove off on his motorcycle. Mutt barked loudly at him. Soon, music began to play as we see opening credits titles were shown. And we see many stars like Peter Fonda as Burnett Stone, Mara Wilson as Lily Stone, Doug Lennox as P.T. Boomer. Alec Baldwin as Mr. Conductor. Tara Strong as Twilight Sparkle. 
and John Bellis as Thomas the Tank Engine. And finally, the title appears in a burst of sparkles. Thomas and the Magic Railroad. We now see the inside of a tunnel as we look to see Thomas the Tank Engine puffing out. Peep, peep! Every story, like a railroad, has its heroes. Meet Thomas. Peep, peep! Hello! And this is where he and his friends live the island of Sodor. We see many engines hard at work taking both passengers and goods like Henry, Gordon, James, Percy, and Toby passing each other at Nafford Station. There's no place like it. And if you have the imagination like I think you do, you'll know why. At a station, Gordon was waiting impatiently for Thomas to arrive. Five, six, seven, eight. Who do we appreciate? Practicing your numbers, Gordon. That's a good engine. Pa, I'm counting how many seconds late you are, Thomas. Now, what does that sign say there? Hmm. Sodor Railway. Really reliable and right on time. Signed, Head of the Railway, Sir Topham Hat. Oh, and it also says, sorry for delays during repairs, we are trying to make this a better railway. But you, but even y so, you weren't on time, little Thomas. And you're being bossy, Gordon. Now please excuse me, I'm meeting Mr. Conductor. He's looking after us whilst the Topham Hat takes a much needed holiday. Oh, I think do think that we should take care of ourselves, even if Dashi and the other ponies aren't here with us at the moment. And I still can't believe that Edward of all engines decided to go on holiday to the mainland with Sir Topham Hat. Why couldn't he choose me? Because, Gordon, Edward has been working harder than the rest of us for some time now, and he deserves a break just as much as Sir Topham Hat does. And also, who would be here to pull the express if you went? But before Gordon could answer, Get out of my way! A big, mean, strong diesel engine named Diesel 10 came racing by, blowing dust all over Thomas and Gordon. Both engines looked very shocked. I have unfinished business here and I want to finish it fast! Whoa, what was that? That, Golden, is trouble. Diesel 10 is here to help us out. 10 out of 10 for devious deeds and brutal strength. Much more troublesome than devious diesel. Diesel 10 acts as though he hates us steam engines. Oh, maybe we do need Mr. Conductor here after all. On time, too. Oh, and I do wish Dash and the other ponies were here with us. Then Thomas puffed away. He started think he started to think all about Diesel Ten's return. And when he was and he was also thinking about his friends, the main six back in Equestria. Oh, if only there was a way to get Twilight and her friends to come here to help us. Then Thomas thought he could hear a voice he never heard before. I can help with that. Huh? Who said that? Up here! Thomas looked up into the sky and saw a light gray pegasus pony with a yellow mane and tail. She had bubbles for her cutie mark and her yellow eyes were crossed. She was smiling at Thomas as she started to fly towards him. But she somehow accidentally lost control and flew right smack dab into Thomas's face. Oof! Oopsie! My bad! I just don't know what went wrong. Oh, it's quite alright. No harm done. But are you alright? 
Oh, yeah. <laughs> Oof. She landed on Thomas's buffer beam. I'm all right. Well, now, what's your name? Every, bon every pony calls me, usually calls me by lots of names, like Muffins, Bubbles, or Dipsy Do. But I'm usually called Derpy. And I actually like being called Derby because of my eyes. They were born like this. She showed she showed Thomas her pretty yellow eyes, all crossed. And what pretty eyes you have, Derpy. Ah, shucks. <laughs> she blushed. You're too kind. Uh, who exactly are you? I've never seen a talking train before. Oh, my name's Thomas, and all trains talk here on Sodor. Sodor! So that's where I am. Well, you said you want the main six to come here? Well, I can surely help you with that, Thomas. I'm good with, I'm good friends with them, especially Rainbow Dash, since we were both born in Cloudsdale. Really? Would you really do that? Of course I would. Whatever the problem that is that whatever the problem is that you trains have at the moment, I'll tell them to come here. Oh, thank you so much, Derpy. You're welcome. So what's the problem, might I ask? Well, so Topham Hat our railway controller is away on holiday, and Diesel 10, possibly the meanest diesel we've ever known, has returned, and I can tell he's out to cause trouble because he said he has unfinished business. Even with Mr. Conductor coming to take care of us, I'm still worried something might happen. Oh, dear! That does sound horrible! I know! That's why we need Twilight and her friends to come here. Well, don't worry, Thomas. I'll tell Twilight and her friends to come over right now. Leave it to me. And she opened her wings and prepared to fly away. Thank you, Duppy. Oh, and do be careful. Don't worry, Thomas. I will. She took off, but then crashed, landed into a nearby bush. Oopsie! After quickly cleaning the leaves off of her, Derpy managed to fly off successfully into the, into the air. I hope she knows what she's doing. She is quite nice. <laughs> and funny, too. Then he puffed away. Meanwhile, in the world of Equestria... Derpy had arrived back. She looked around to see if there was any sign of the main six. Then she decided to try looking at the Golden Oak Library where Twilight Sparkle lived. When she got there, she could see the main six hanging out together. Derpy flew down towards the door, then... Oof! She flew face first into the door. From inside... Oh! Who's that? I'll get it! <laughs> uh, hi! Ooh! Hey, girls! It's Derpy! Oh, hello, Derpy. Hello, girls. What's up, Derp? I've got some urgent news for you. You're needed on the island of Sodor. And so Derpy told the main six about what Thomas told her. Sir Topham had on holiday? An evil diesel? And who in the hay is Mr. Conductor? Whoever they are, it sounds like the engines are in serious dire need of help. Then we must go and help them. Right away! She was about to sprint out the door when Twilight stopped her. Wait, Pinky. We may need to pack a few things before we leave. Quite right, darling. We'll need to pack all the essentials. Food, sleeping bags, 
possibly some comfy clothes, some brushes, and, and everything else to last us until Sir Topham Hat returns. Ooh! We're gonna stay on the island of Sodor! Well then, let's all head back to our homes and get... Well then, let's all head back to our own homes real fast and get packing. And I'll stay here to do my own packing. And I'll tell Princess Celestia about your staying over on Sodor for a while. Right! Let's do this! And so Derpy left to tell Celestia, and Twilight's friends went off to their homes while Twilight stayed behind to pack. She even told Spike and Owlicious about where she where she about what was going on and asked asked them both to look after the Golden Oak Library for her. Sure thing, Twilight. No problem. Woo! Great. Thanks, you two. After a while, Twilight's friends all came back with everything they had packed. All packed! I even brought some cupcakes if anyone's hungry. Oh, I'm just so excited! And I, of course, packed... And I, of course, brought all the clothes we'll need. She had a lot of suitcases. And I brought some apple cider in case we get thirsty. And, of course, some books for us to read. Any daring do ones? Yes, Rainbow Dash. Awesome! Now, every pony ready? Ready! Very well then. <sighs> Let's go to Sodor. And the six ponies all headed to the where the portal to Sodor was. The island of Sodor is at one end of Mr. Conductor's universe, as well as the universe to Equestria filled with magical ponies. And at the other end, far away across oceans of time, up and over Muffle Mountain and hidden deep in the valley, is Shining Time. I think you'd like it. Shining Time has its own magic, and this is where Mr. Conductor lives. The song Shining Time by Marin Ord plays in the background, as we can see many things happening, like children playing, a man with a funny hat juggling while in a telephone booth, a red-haired lady waving to a little boy holding a goldfish, and a woman waving goodbye to a man on a train. Mr. C, a small human being, had just finished giving the flowers some plant food when he saw the woman not looking where she was going. With waves of his hands, he levitated the basket just, just before she was about to crash into it, saving her from a bad headache. He tipped his hat to her as she left. We then cut back to Sodor, and we see Thomas crossing a bridge. <clears throat> and by the way, I think that you're going to help Mr. Conductor, Thomas, and Twilight along the way in this story. If Diesel Tenna's unfinished business, there's sure to be trouble right around the corner. He headed straight for Timmy's sheds where we find James the Red Engine sulking over a pesky fly buzzing around his face. Sandal fly! Uh, no, boo fly! Ah, uh, no! Shoe fly! That's it! Better still buzz off! Thomas reversed, not noticing that he was about to hit the bump buffers. He bumped into them loudly. Ah! Botheration! His eyes were spinning. You weren't concentrating, Thomas. Lucky for you that the buffers were there. 
Well, that's what bubbles are for, to stop engines from crashing. What are you doing here in the sheds, James? Ah, oh, my wheels are feeling worn out and rusty, and I'm feeling a little blue, which isn't so hot when you're red. Sir Topham Hatt told me to pull trucks instead of coaches, and I was very naughty. So Sir Topham Hatt put me here in the shed and told me to think about all the ways I can be really useful. And when I do, I can come out again. He's just trying to make this a better railway for steam engines. And also, if Rarity were here right now, I don't suppose you'd want to see her. I don't suppose you'd want to see... I don't suppose you'd want her to see you like this, now would you? I most certainly do not! Me neither. <gasps> Both engines gasped. They knew those voices very well. And coming up right beside each of them was Twilight Sparkle and Rarity. Both coming with their essentials for their stay on Sodor for a few days. The other four had already gone and met their engine friends at other locations. <gasps> Twilight! You made it! And Rarity, dear, too! Of course we are. We got the message from Derpy that you, that you all needed help. <clears throat> Indeed. So we're going to be staying here on Sodor with you for... <clears throat> Indeed. So we're going to be staying here on Soda with you all for a few days to help you with in any way we possibly can, darlings. Oh, that's great! But where are the other ponies? Oh, don't worry. They're here too. They've already gone and met, with, met up with their engine friends, respectively. Oh, I see. Well, it's great that you're, you're all here to help us now, Twilight. Diesel 10 has arrived on Sodor to help out while Edward is away. But they don't... But Tom... But no, none of them noticed that Diesel 10 was rolling up right beside them. Uh, 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 Thomas, girls! And if we prove to be useful, then Diesel 10 won't have to help us. Help you? <laughs> huh? <coughs> oh! You'll always need help. Because steam engines are cowardly, cranky, worn out hunks of metal that flirt with rainbow pesto ponies that couldn't hurt a fly. Ugh. The, be the fly was still buzzing around James's face. No, we're not! Yes, you are. Aunt! Are? Now, I've come back to find a lost steam engine. Huh? What? <laughs> I'm gonna destroy her and use her magic to dominate you! His claw pinchy clashed a few times. Maybe even more powerful than you ponies. And then you teapots will be nothing but useless scrap. Right, Pinchy? <laughs> you, you horrid monster! Big bully, stinker! Having magic doesn't make one powerful, Diesel 10. Twilight's... R and even if you could use magic, it wouldn't be of any good use to you. Twilight's right. We're really useful engines. You won't dominate us and you won't destroy uh, whoever hers. We won't let you. And neither will Mr. Conductor. I'm off to fetch him right now. Come on, Twilight. I'll take you to meet him. Right with you, Thomas. She got into Thomas's cab. And both she and and both she and Thomas hurried away to find Mr. Conductor, leaving James and Rarity surprised and rather confused. What lost engine? 
I don't know. Me neither. They both said at the exact same time. <laughs>